Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today I will solve some problem that you will find on page number 871. Turn to it, please. Page 871. Always make sure the book is in front of you. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, and if you wish to get hold of me, you can simply send me an email at kashmariprep at icloud.com. Alright? Let's take a look at number one. The very first problem on page number 870, 871. Number 10 rather. Number 10, it says that we took two trips, first trip and second trip. It says the first trip took 43 days longer than the second trip. And together the two trips took 1,003 days. Question simply is, how many days long was the second trip? So let's pretend that the second trip, let's pretend the second trip was S days. If the second trip was S days, the first trip was 43 days longer than the second trip, the first trip must be S plus 43. So this is our first trip, this is our second trip, and together we are told that it took 1,003 days. As you can see, it's a quite straightforward, simple equation. Let's subtract 43 from both sides, so we get 2s is equal to, let's subtract 43 from both sides, we get 0, 6, 960, that looks like, 960. Divide both sides by 2, if we divide both sides by 2, s is going to equal to, if we divide it by 2, we get 4, 9 is 4 twos, 4 after 4 twos are 8, after we take away 8 from the 9, we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins uh, 6, becomes 16, and 16 has 8 twos, there you go. It's very simple, very straightforward. Apparently the first trip took 480 days. Let's do number 2, shall we? Number 2 says, let me get my er eraser thingy ready because I wasn't, I didn't think about it ahead of, ahead of time. Because the one that I have is getting quite dirty. All right. Number 2 is uh, Number 11 is equally straightforward. They're giving us very straightforward two linear equations. One is 7x plus 3y is equal to 8. This is number 11. And the other one is 6x plus 6x minus 3y, which makes it actually easier, is equal to 5. And the question simply is, how much is x minus y? What is their difference? Oh, blast it. I just put it and I ended up erasing it. Well, as you can see, we have a positive 3y and negative 3y. We simply add the two equations. We can get rid of the y immediately. We get 13x is equal to 13. x is equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, how much is y? Let's put it in this equation here. If x is equal to 1, we get 7 plus 3y. 7 plus 7 times 1, 7 plus 3y equals 8, which means 3y is equal to 1, which means y simply equals to 1 third. y is 1 third, x is 1, so it's simply 1 minus a third, 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. And that is answer B. Question to number 10 that we just finished was also, was also B. Number, 11, number 12. Number 12 is on the next page and it has to do with this chart and the graph and all those things that they give us. It says over which period Does it go down the least? In other words, during the during the different periods that are given to us in the four answer choices, during which period is the rate of growth the lowest? So let's take a look at the graph. It 
it looks something like this. And the, and the period that they're telling us is from day 84 to day 63. 63 to 84, that is answer choice D. And as you can see, that is the period where, where it's going to grow the least. It's, it's just going to grow up. It's just going to grow up by that much. Because that's where this is the height and these are the days. In all the other all the other three periods that they give us, the growth is going to be much higher because the slope is much higher. By the time you get to the last period, it almost becomes a flat. It becomes slope almost becomes zero. It hardly grows at all. It's the last period. Answer is D. There's not much to do there. Number 13. Number 13, they tell us, they're telling us that the function is They tell us, as you can clearly see, this is not a linear linear function, this is not a linear graph. Obviously, slopes keeps changing at every point. This is clearly not linear. But they're, they're telling us that during some period, during a period, during a period when growth is constant, What does A represent? This, this, this coefficient A during the period when the growth is constant. So during, during this entire time, there is some period, a short period of time, where growth is almost constant. Not necessarily exactly constant, but it's almost constant. For example, here it might be. It might be, it looks like a straight line here. As you can see, the slope is constant. If that's the case, almost constant. If that's the case, because it looks like a linear equation, a linear graph, then in that case, what's the interpretation of A, this coefficient of A? Well, that's just a slope. That's just a slope and that's the intercept. That's all it is. Let's write down what, let's, let's write down the top. It is a slope. How do we articulate it? Well, A represents, A represents, rate of growth per time period. How much does it grow each time period? The time period here is a day. So it represents the rate of growth per time period or if you like per day. It just tells us how much does it grow in each day what is the rate of growth per day? And that is answer choice A. Answer choice A says that A represents the predicted number of growth each day during this period only, not through the entire entire story, only through this period, where the slope is where the slope happens to be almost constant. The answer is A. Answer number 13 is A. It represents the growth period, it represents the rate of growth rather. It represents the rate of growth per period, per day. Let's look at 14. Oh, 14 is a little bit more complicated. I would need a lot of room. I'm going to have to erase everything. Except perhaps this part. Actually, we don't even need this part anymore. Number 14, it says from day 14 to day 35, rate of growth It's almost constant, so I shouldn't have raised the graph. I should have left it there, because the, the segment that I just showed you in red, where it looks like almost linear, well, apparently that's from day 34 to day, day 14 to day 35. And the question is, during that period, from day 14 to day 35, which of these four equations that they give us would do the job in predicting the growth during this period? 
So it says from day 14 to day 35, the rate of growth is almost constant. The question simply is, which equation works? A says h is equal to 2 times t minus 15. B says h is equal to h is equal to 4 and a half times t minus 27. C says is this. Let's see. I had to put all the answer choices up because it will make our life easier when we're working through it. So let me redo the graph here. It looks something like this. And from day 14, day 14 to day 35, you have the book in front of you, which is why I insist that you always must have a book in front of you. Makes it easier. If you look in the in the graph, because mine obviously is not drawn, it's not going to be drawn accurately. Look at the look in the book, and you'll see that at day fourteen, at day fourteen, if you read the, if you take the reading, it looks like it's about thirty-five. We go from fourteen to thirty-five on day thirty-five, because it goes up by seven days, I believe. There you go. So it's fourteen. Uh, 21, 28, 21, 28, and 35, and at 35, it is about 130. Make sure you agree to this part, make sure you agree to this part before you proceed. Look at the graph and make sure that you agree with me. And once you agree that yes, it does look like about 130 and 35, then we can begin our story. Because all we have to do here is very straightforward, very simple proposition here. All we have to do, all we have to establish here is how much is the slope? Is, is it is it two? Is it four and a half? Is it seven? Is it thirteen? That's the thing. We'll worry about this part later. Okay? Let's take a look at it. It goes from 35 to 130. 35. It goes from 35 to 130. Now, we agree that if we have 35. If we double 35, we get 70. If we double 35, and if we double 70, we get 140. In other words, 140 represents 4 times 35. That would be a good starting point. That would be a good starting point because even though 4 times 35 is 140, and this is only 130, but we must keep in mind that after we finish that doing that part, we have to subtract some amount. Every one of these answer choices has a sub subtraction. So that tells us, that's our cue, that the slope is not likely to be 2. It's 35 to 130 is almost 4 times. The slope is also not likely to be 7. 7 is extremely high because if you start at 35 multiplied by 7, you're not going to be at 130. You're going to be far above that. It certainly is not 13. 13 is there just to confuse us because of this 130. Now, if I were taking the exam, if I were taking the exam right now myself, this would this this would be the end of the story. But because we're not taking the exam right now, I'm going to actually convince you. I'm going to actually show you very quickly that it is indeed the right answer. We don't have to worry about any of them. The slope is not seven. It is not thirteen. It is not two. It's going to be four and a half. I need the room, so I will have to erase this thing. Where can we put this? I will have to do it here because we have we have there is no other place. So. The answer choice that we're working with is D, 4.5 times T minus 27. Four and a half times times T minus 27. And we're going to write our four and a half as nine over two. It will make life easier. This is answer choice B. Okay, so let's begin, shall we? When it's 35, right here, when it's 35, if you put 35 in here, 9 times 35 over 2, 9 times 35 over 2, let's divide top and bottom by 2. Let's divide top and top. It doesn't have to be accurate, do you understand? It doesn't have to be accurate. This is 35, 35 is not divisible by 2, so I'm going to make it 36. As long as you don't tell anyone, you're fine. Okay? Shh. That's it. 
Let's divide that divided by 2 now is 36. 3 has 1, 2, after we take away 2 from it, the remainder is 1, goes here and becomes 16, and that's 8. Okay? 9 times 18, 9 times 18, 10 times 18, again, this is this is where the, where the practice comes in. 10 times 18 is 180. I could write everything down like a baby step, but that would be annoying for me and for you. So just listen to me. 10 times 18 would be 180. Therefore, 9 times 18 is simply 180 minus 18. I'm going to pretend it's 20, so it's approximately 160. After we have that 160, we have to take away 27. After we take away 27, we are approximately 30. Because if we're taking away 27, that gives us 33, and this is 18, this is where we have 2 extra. You see, oh, I already did the work. So it's going, so if you actually write, instead of, instead of 160, it's, if had I actually written 162, and then we take away 27, we'll end up at 135, which is exactly what we have here. Uh, where are we? 30. We're doing 35. We're doing this point right here. So it's 135. This is actually 130. That's close enough. Let me show you the other one. Let me show you the other one now. That also does the job. And this time we'll put down, this time we'll put down 14. 9 times 14, this part right here, and we should get 35 after we finish the work. Over 2, minus 27. This is very easy. 7, 9, 9, 7 to 63. 63 minus 27, we get 6, and 5 minus 2. There you go. We're supposed to get, we're supposed to get 35, it says 36. The answer is B. Like I said, I would not have ordinarily done it myself because it wasn't necessary. You could just look at the other choices and you can tell right away that you're going from 35 to 130. It is not 2 times the amount. It is not 7 times the amount. It is certainly not 13 times the amount. It's around 4 times. And the reason why it turned out to be 4.5 is because we're subtracting something from it. Alright, number 15. Number 15, on the same page, number 15 from the same page, we have x and y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11 over 4, 25 over 4, 39 over 4, 53 over 4, 67 over 4. And our job is to locate which of these four functions actually does the job. It says which of the following equation does the proper job of relating x and y. And the answer choices are y is equal to 1 half times 5 over 2 x, y is equal to 2 times 3 quarter x, y is equal to 3 quarter x plus 2, and y is equal to 7 halves There are 4 answer choices. And here's the idea. In a situation like this, when you're presented with having to pick something among the 4 answer choices, start with the simplest one. Start with the simplest one. Only when the simplest scenario does not work should you have to spend your time looking at something complicated. I'm not going to worry about exponential, exponential growth. Let's not worry about it right now. Secondly, it doesn't even look to me like an exponential growth. Let's see what it is. Let's first see if it's, if it's one of these. Let's first see if it's linear. In order for us to see the uh, whether or not it's linear, let's see if it grows by the constant amount. So let's begin our story. From 11 11 to 25, that's a difference of 14. You agree? 25 to 39, 25 plus 10 is 35, 35 plus 4 is 39. Well, what do you know? All away, right away, it's looking pretty good. If you had under 14 to it, 39 plus 10 is 49, 49 plus 4 would be 53. 
If you add 114 to it, 53 plus 10 is 63, 63 plus 4 is 67. What do you know? It's going up by 14. It's exactly going up by 14. Four. So the growth rate, the growth rate, let me change the color. Each time the growth rate is 14 over 4. And what do you suppose 14 over 4 is? 14 over 4 is 7 halves. Right there. And then why minus 3 quarter? Oh, which, which makes perfect sense. We have to have minus 3 quarter because when x is 1, had it been just 14 over 4, y would have been 14 over 4 minus x. But that's not the case. y is 11 over 4. Which is why we have written, they give us a denominator of 4 and not 2. Which is why they didn't reduce it. So here's, here's what happens. When x is 1, we have 14 over 4 minus 3 over 4. So let's forget the 4 part right now. So we have 14 minus 3. 14 minus 3 is 11. When, when x is 2, 14 times 2 is 28. 28 minus 3 will give us 25 over 4. Similarly here, when x is 3, 3 times 14 is 42. 42 minus 3 will give us 39. Answer is this one. The answer is D. Number 16. Number 16, before we dive into it, before we dive into number 16, let's look at something else. Here's our triangle. Let's call it PQR. Let's say that this is angle X and this is 90. If this is X degrees and this is 90 degrees, and since they all have to, this, all three of them have to add up to 180, if this is X degrees, this would have to be 90 minus X degrees. You agree? Let's take a look at it. Can you tell me what is sine of X? In this triangle, what is sine of X? Sine of X, this is X, is opposite, which is QP over the hypotenuse, QR. Now, can you tell me what is the cosine of 90 minus X? 90 minus X is this one. What's the cosine of it? The side that was opposite to this angle, X, the side that is opposite to X, is the side that is adjacent to this angle. So it's simply QP over PR. In other words, this is same as cosine of 90 minus X. And that's what we need to understand. What we need to understand is that cosine of 90 minus x equals sine of x. It's an important identity that we must know at all times when, it, when we are sitting down to take the exam. Once we understand that concept, we can, we can make the progress. So let's take a look at it. Let's do number 16 now. So we have triangle ABC. And this is 32. This is right angle obviously. It would have to be right angle because that's what we're dealing with. Let's get all is 58 degrees. D, E, F. And the question is which of the following is equivalent to BC over AB. Let's find out, shall we? So, what do you suppose 32 plus 58 is? 58 plus 2 is 60, plus 30 is 90. As you can see, they add up to 90. Let's begin our story. That's what they're testing here. Let's find out sine, sine of 32 degrees. So 32 degrees appears in this triangle. 32 sine would be BC, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is, which is AB, which is exactly what they're looking for here. And what do you suppose this has to equal to? Sine of 32, we just learned, sine of, sine of 32 would have to equal cosine of 90 minus 32. Cosine of 90 minus 32. The same as cosine of 58 degrees. And now we look at this triangle. What is cosine of 58 degrees? 
If you look at this triangle, the cosine of 58 degrees, cosine we're dealing with 58, this is the adjacent, BF. Over the hypotenuse, DE. There you go. We did it. This quantity equals this quantity. And that is answer twice B. That was the end of the page. We'll stop right here. I'm sure the video is already way too long. We'll meet again tomorrow, obviously. And we'll pick up our story where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to talk to me, send me an email at keshwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now.